What are some ways of doing exercises in the gym that can potentially facilitate our ability to move better outside of the gym? Sprinting is only really truly about four things. How much force you apply in the ground, how fast can you apply it, the direction in which you apply it, and how heavy you are. And it's just those four things. So we need to, yeah, force is important. We have to be able to apply a certain level of force. But there's a threshold to this. Everyone says there's a big question and has been for a long time. How much strength, quote unquote, is enough in sprinting? Well, enough is, it's the same question that we ask, we should ask in every task. There's a rate of diminishing returns on all of these capacities that we need, that we require. Is spending an extra few years trying to get an extra five kilos to your power clean or an extra 25 pounds to your back squat as effective as a means to get faster than it would be if say you start skipping maybe do some more explosive work actually start sprinting a little bit more so there's always this from a programming perspective is understanding where the athlete is, what they require, what they've got, where they are in the rate of diminished returns on each of those capacities. So first, we have to understand that. So you've gone on one end of the spectrum, somebody like Ben Johnson, who applies incredibly, incredible amounts of force. And on the other end, you've got somebody like Andre de Grasse, who doesn't apply relatively any force, but does it really, really fast. So this gives you like an understanding of the spectrum of capacities and abilities that humans have to do a task in an almost infinite number of ways. So to get to your question, it depends on who you are and what you're good at and why you're good at it. There's not one way. When you've got a Ben Johnson who can apply incredible amounts of forces, and that's one of the reasons why he's fast. And on the other end of the spectrum, you've got Andre de Grasse, who's weaker than most high school girls, who's incredible fast, incredibly fast. Where does that leave us? That just tells us, okay, there's many different ways to do this, which is great. It's cool. That gives us, again, some freedom to better ask the questions about what it is that makes you, Andrew, really good. Like you apply a lot of force. Okay, let's lean into that. Let's try to improve your speed by try to maximize your force. But what are you limited by? Okay, you're, you're having trouble getting off the ground. You're not super reactive or reflexive. So we have to work some things into your program that's going to make you a little bit more reactive or reflexive. So maybe we'll do some jump squats. Maybe we'll do some hurdle hops. Maybe we'll do some more skipping. Maybe we feel like, okay, you've reached the, the rate of diminishing returns on your force capacity. You don't need to squat four plates if you squat 385. Is going from 385 to 405 going to make you any faster? No, not at all. So let's keep you at 385 and we'll just do some other things. So first and foremost, it's respecting the individuality of all things and understanding that there's not one way in which I can tell you do this because this is what he did and that's what's going to work for you. Now, there is, as I said before, there's non-negotiables and there's rules to things. So sprinting is how you transmit that force into the track in a really fast period of time in the right direction. So the transmission of force is typically more important than the magnitude of the force. So transmission of force means how the, the amount of force that you put into the ground, how do you use it to propel yourself forward? Yeah, jump squat comes to mind. 100%. Push clap, push ups. Yep. Um, yeah, that, that's what comes to mind. Yeah, I, I think um, that's pretty accurate. Olympic yeah. lifts is one yeah. is one that mm -hmm. where a lot of people would say, yeah, it's Olympic lift. That's kind of what we're doing with yeah, Olympic lifts. Yeah, like a lifts. clean, you're kind of, yeah, right. I, I'm not, an, I don't do Olympic lifts, but from what I understand, I, you know, they're pushing off the ground to get, get the bar up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's essentially, can we apply high forces fast over a long period of time? In the, in the, um, the population of athletes I work with, maximum strength is at the rate of diminishing returns already. We don't spend almost any time working on that. At a lower level of population, maybe if you're a high school kid or if you're in your 20s when you're not super, or if you're super weak, just by increasing your force capacity, so your ability to apply force, you will get faster. Because remember what the calculation is, amount of force, how fast, direction, and body mass. So it is important. It just becomes less and less and less important the faster you get. So it's, and then it becomes when it's less important, when the ability to produce a high magnitude of force isn't important, what is important? So then we're starting to looking at plyometric things. And probably most specifically, I'm looking at specific isometric stuff in the weight room. So let's look at the position in which we're applying in excess of five times our body weight. And that's when the foot is directly underneath the center mass. The foot is flat on the ground. There's about a 15 degree knee bend and there's about a five to 10 degree hip bend. So we're pushing up against an immovable bar or holding a very, very heavy bar on one leg with as heavy as we can or as hard as we can for 
somewhere between three to five seconds times three to four repetitions, and we'll do like three sets of that. So that's, that's the primary one for me, is that position where the foot is directly underneath the center mass. There's a little bit of a knee bend, there's a little bit of a hip bend. And we do a lot of isometric work right there. And this is my bias. I do nothing bilateral at all. You mean parallel stance? Parallel stance. Nothing, except occasionally, if it is an issue, you know, with neural drive or whatever, I'll do some uh, uh, trap bar deadlifts. So some parallel stance, trap bar deadlifts. I think it's a great exercise. I think that's difficult to do with a staggered stance. It's very difficult to do with a, uh, a single leg stance, but you can load up some pretty good weight on a uh, parallel stance trap bar deadlift. And yeah, I feel pretty good. And you, you get a good feeling out of that. It's not necessarily be, to be able to apply or uh, generate more force. It's more about sort of neural drive than it is for anything else. Everything, every single other thing that we do is in a staggered stance heel to toe or kickstand, which is kind of the same same sort of thing, just a different terminology, or split stance or a stance where the, the front foot is elevated or the rear foot is elevated. So we'll do, as, a, as, we, as we've talked about quite a bit now, find opportunities to get the knee behind the butt. That's a really important position. Can we get stronger, faster, more control, more repeatability and more range at that position? One of the things I learned from you yesterday is well, let's, I'll double click first on this staggered stance. So this is one foot slightly in front of the other. I've been doing this in, with various lifts in the gym for a long time. Curls, tricep extensions, and I make sure to vary the stance. So one foot is in front for one set, one is in front for the other. Sometimes even in the middle of the set, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll switch them up after. And I found that to be tremendously helpful for building core stability and a number of other things. Uh, and it sounds like it might help running gate as well. The other thing that you said yesterday that I think is really important that I've not thought of before, but now I'm doing is anytime you have a, a foot elevated in the gym to get onto the toe, front foot can be flat. Yeah, but I, I think the ability to get off your first ray, so mm -hmm. for the big toe to bend and flex mm -hmm. is really important. So for me, if, I, if, if that's important, I'm going to search for opportunities to do that as often as I can. So if I have an option to either flex the big toe or not, then we're going to flex the big toe. Like I look for opportunities to extend the hip. How can I work hip extension exercises into everything I do? How do I look at, or do I, I look for full chain or full body force transmission exercises as much as I possibly can? Ideally, from the left foot to the right hand and the right foot to the left hand, so cross body. So I'm looking for ways in which we can find a way to transfer the capacities that we are building in the weight room directly to the trunk.